Thirty-year-old Nilan Karina, or Len, is raising her children in the same neighborhood she grew up in. But the childhood she spent here in Artex, a former factory employee housing compound, was different. This place was nice. There used to be a playground, a volleyball court, a basketball court, and there were even pine trees. We also played on seesaw. Now her children have nowhere to run, or walk, or even swim. The house is surrounded by water, stagnant flood water, that is. Artex sits in one of the lowest lying portions of Metro Manila's Malabon district. Flood water, which used to come and go, has stayed for more than a decade. We used to be able to pump out flood water, so we'd be flooded for half of the year and dry for another half. In the past, storms never caused flooding this huge, but recent storms seem to have been stronger, and monsoon rains have caused flooding almost reaching two stories. The Philippines consistently ranks among nations most vulnerable to climate change. An average of 20 typhoons batter the country each year. Many of them fatal, as well as destructive. 2013's super typhoon Haiyan blew winds topping 300 kilometers an hour and sent tall waves crashing onto coastal communities. And we were there to witness it all. Typhoon Haiyan has made landfall over here. After the storm had passed, there was only death and destruction everywhere we looked. It was a wake-up call for Filipinos. Now they heed warnings from local officials without question. The result? Fewer casualties. But that doesn't mean Filipinos can let their guard down. The rising temperature affects a rising ocean surface temperature. And so when storms form in the Pacific, they pick up the heat and that causes a more intense storm when it hits landfall. But climate change overall increases the frequency and intensity of the storm. So it is expected that super typhoons like Haiyan will happen again. Len knows that can happen in her or her children's lifetime. But she says they have nowhere else to go. <laughs> We'd have to rent if we were to move out. We can't afford it. The children are going to school. There's water, electricity, all these things we have to spend on. Here, we don't have to pay rent. They're used to it, she says, even if it means having to roll and stand on this makeshift vessel to do just about everything, including, ironically, collecting something as basic as clean water. People here in Artex are left with no choice but to adapt. Island nations like the Philippines leave some of the smallest carbon footprints on Earth, but are the most vulnerable to rising sea levels. Bigger carbon-emitting countries, on the other hand, face greater challenges and responsibilities. My colleague Ryan Chua is in China, the world's largest polluter, but also a country gradually weaning itself away from a fossil fuel that for decades sustained its economic growth. It was the fossil fuel that powered China's economic rise, providing cheap energy throughout the country and creating millions of jobs. But its residue also choked parts of the country in hazardous smog and made China the world's top polluter. Now China is losing its appetite for coal. That's becoming evident in Datong, a city in Shanxi province known as China's coal capital. The machines have fallen silent at Hongjialiang, one of 25 collieries in the province that were closed down last year. This coal mine operated for almost 70 years, sustaining the lives of generations of workers. In 2016, as coal consumption here in Datong and other parts of China was already in decline, the mine had to shut down. And as China continues to move away from coal as an energy source, this likely won't be the last. Wen Ping, a miner for 20 years now, says the industry's future appears bleak. 
The coal industry's performance hasn't been good in recent years, and sometimes our payment is delayed. So some workers transfer to other industries to make money. Datong's existing mines are run mostly by machines, from coal extraction to transportation, a process that officials say helps reduce pollution. The coal is transported to the power plant through a belt in an enclosed environment. Because the pollution problem is solved from the source, when people come to Datong, which is called a city of coal, they find that the air is pretty good. Experts say China's coal consumption began to decline in 2014. In recent years, it's been closing down coal mines and power plants and halting plans to build new ones. The goal is to cap total capacity at 4.1 billion tons by 2020 and reduce coal's share in the country's energy mix to below 58 percent. In the time frame of six to seven years, China has transformed itself from, you know, a climate bad boy to a reluctant leader to now, you know, uh, with the potential uh, to embrace um, um, true climate uh, leadership. Datong is embracing other sectors like tourism to provide jobs to laid off coal workers. And it's begun the shift to renewable energy, with solar and wind power plants already built. It's part of nationwide efforts that have made China the world's largest investor in renewable energy. In Anhui, another coal-rich province, the move toward renewables has been undertaken on an enormous scale. This vast solar farm in the city of Huainan floats on a sunken coal mine. Floating solar farms aren't new, and they've been set up in other countries in the past. But what makes this one remarkable is its sheer scale and capacity. Covering an area the size of 160 football fields, this solar farm has a capacity of 40 megawatts, enough to power some 15,000 homes for an entire year. Its workers include former miners driven out of the downsizing industry. Li Jingyang spent 30 years digging coal underground. Today, he's in charge of preparing steel frames for solar panels. The air was bad in the coal mine where I worked. It was a negative pressure zone. When you go down 600 to 700 meters underground, you feel like carrying a heavy load while walking. Here, the air is good. You can get sunshine, it's easier to walk, and the working environment is better. A solar farm built on water is cooler than one on the ground. Solar panels can produce more power with cooler temperatures. They are also cleaner when installed on water than on land, where dust affects the generating capacity. Shifting away from coal to renewable energy has its challenges, including cost. But environmental campaigners are optimistic. If your you know, coal uh, boom story is over in China, half of your global greenhouse gas boom story is, is over. For now, coal remains China's chief energy source. But some experts believe domestic pressures to tackle pollution and the global campaign against climate change could accelerate coal's demise in a country that once had an insatiable appetite for it. Ryan Chua, CGTN.